Hey, what's up? This is Václav. So finally, this is a fifth part of the five-part series about making automations in Home Assistant. So in the previous four series, we have really started from using standard blueprint that, was, uh, that came with Home Assistant, downloading a blueprint uh, created by someone in Home Assistant community, then uh, there was a two parts where we were creating uh, automations, the simple ones, and then in the third part we made a little bit more complex ones. And uh, in the last part we were talking about templates. And we're gonna use all of that and wrap it together and we're gonna create a blueprint that we can either use in our own home assistant. We can reuse it for multiple automation scenarios, but we can also, more importantly, share it back with the community so other people can actually use something we have created, which is the reason I'm really making all this, uh, all those videos, because I really want to grow this community of creative people who share their automations with the others. So I'm really looking forward for it. So today we're gonna pretty much build on everything uh, we have done in the past. There's one more, one more thing, additional thing, uh, I'm going to talk to you about which is selectors, which is the sort of header of the uh, uh, blueprint where we're going to create this sort of uh, graphical user interface. It's going to allow you to configure uh, the parameters of the blueprint. But after that, it's going to be pretty straightforward. So let's get started. Right, so, um, so we're going to create something. A couple of people ask me, and that is to create an automation that is going to remind me that uh, there's going to be a garbage collection in the following day. That is when you uh, sorting your garbage. Uh, this is, uh, we're going to do it for my garbage collection integration. So if you use that, it's going to be immediately useful for you. If you don't, uh, then let me just introduce to you what it does. So uh, this is an integration that uh, creates, allows you to create a number of entities. And each entity, uh, there's like a pattern you can configure uh, how often and when you are uh, collecting your garbage. So for example, in my case, so this is my real case, uh, I have uh, four types of garbage. So this is the general waste that is collected uh, every other week on Wednesday. And there is a plastic and paper that is collected uh, on Friday. Uh, one week plastic, the other week paper, and so on. And then the bio waste, which they collect twice a month during the summer and spring, and uh, once a month in, in the winter. And what it does, it creates those uh, sensors. So let me just uh, show you one of those. So this is the sensor for the bio waste. And it gets a couple of attributes. So this is the day for the next collection, and it says it's gonna be in nine days. And it also has a state which has uh, three possible values. It's either zero when the collection is today, it's one when the collection is tomorrow, or it's two when the collection is uh, sometimes later. And I'm using those three states because then I can render those uh, different picture entities. There's gonna be either green or amber, for example, or gray in this case, if the collection is sometimes in the future. And so we're going to create a blueprint that will allow me to create an automation uh, to set reminders for those different garbage types. But uh, I'm lazy, so I'm not going to create the blueprint from scratch. And uh, I'm going to start by creating a automation for one of those entities. I'm going to pick up the bio waste. And then once I have it, uh, I have a working uh, automation, I'm going to take the body, the content of that, and I'm gonna turn it into a blueprint, replacing the actual values uh, by the inputs uh, for the blueprint. So let's start. So I'm gonna go into configuration and uh, to create automation, previously we have usually started from blueprints to create it from a blueprint if we had one. Well, we don't have a blueprint yet. We're gonna just create it, right? So we'll have to start from automation and scenes and in here, create automation here on the right bottom. It's asking me again, do you have a blueprint? I told you I don't. So let's start with an empty automation. And here we can name the automation. Doesn't really matter, right? We're not gonna uh, use the automation. So it doesn't matter, we don't have to give it a name. What is important is the trigger. 
So how are we going to trigger the automation? <laughs> That's quite interesting question. Um, I had a couple of uh, discussions with people which, which had quite a logical uh, thinking that it's really triggered by the garbage collection entity changing the state, right? Or changing the attribute number of days. And that's what drives this, right? That's what drives the notification. Well, that's a, that's a good thought, but when is the number of days till the next collection date changing, right? The dates are changing at midnight, right? So if I would trigger this uh, automation or this blueprint by changing a date, it will send me the message on midnight, which is not very practical. So, so they ask me, so how do I uh, delay it? So I trigger the automation and then I wait till something like six o'clock or eight o'clock in the evening to send the notification to your phone then. So uh, it's doable. You could, I suppose, create a timer or you could do some other complicated things, but it's completely unnecessary. <laughs> we don't have to do it. Because what we really want to do is, we would like to send a notification at a given time in the evening. Or there could be other events that could trigger it, for example, when you come home. But let's keep it simple. Let's, for this example, for this blueprint, let's say we will trigger it at specific time. So let's run the automation at specific time. So we'll say, trigger it by a time and it's gonna be fixed time and let's say it's going to be 8 p.m. Uh, every day. So we will send a notification at 8 o'clock in the evening. But we don't want to send it every day, right? We only want to send it when the garbage collection is going to happen to the following day. Well, for that reason, we have the condition, right? So we end a condition. And the condition is going to be if the state of the garbage collection, so I'm going to pick up the bio waste, and uh, I could pick the state, but uh, I'm going to collect. I'm going to pick the attribute days instead. And the reason I'm going to do it because this uh, garbage collection, it's got a parameter a verbose state, which allows you to instead of the state zero one two. Uh, have the state in in uh, in English like today, tomorrow, or in a couple of days. So if you would configure it, it wouldn't work. So I want to make it universal. So I will uh, have a condition that the number of days is one. So what we've just done is it will every day at 8 p.m. check whether the uh, garbage collection is going to be in one day. If yes then it's going to continue and send a notification. And if not, then it's going to just end there and check it in the following day. So that's cool. Now we can just send a notification. So I have a couple of ways to do that. I can either do it by calling a service, but I'm going to uh, use the device uh, action uh, for my mobile app device, which I have on my phone, uh, because it's going to allow me easier in the blueprint uh, to configure the selector. So for the device, I'm going to go for my mobile phone. So it's a uh, uh, Bashek, which is the mobile phone. And then the action, well, there's only one, send notification. And in here, in the message, well, I'll just say text because I'm going to configure it in the blueprint. So I'm going to just put some placeholder in here. So this is it. Uh, this is my uh, automation. What it really does is I have this uh, fixed time trigger, then there is the condition, and then there is the action. So I can save it. In fact, I don't have to save it. What I could do is I can just uh, click on those three dots in here, go to YAML, and I can just uh, select and copy that. So Control, Command C, and then I can exit from the automation. I can leave and I don't have to really save it. Then I can go to my favorite text editor. You can go to your notepad or whatever you use. I'm going to use actually the Visual Studio in my home assistant because I can. Uh, and I'm going to directly 
created in my uh, blueprints directory and the reason I'm adding it directly there is so we could use it right away and test it so for the purpose of this video in your case you can just save the file locally on your computer and then you could uh, upload it to the internet and uh, download it to your home system uh, from there and I will show that to you later so the blueprints they are in the config blueprints uh, and then there is two directories scripts and automations because blueprints they could be either for scripts or for automations I think I'm gonna do one more video. I'm gonna talk about scripts. So uh, This is for automation and then uh, It could put the blueprint directly there But there could be a bunch of directories based on where the blueprints came from. There's those two which came uh, with home assistant uh, and I have uh, my uh, GitHub repository in here, Broxy70, where I have those uh, blueprints that um, uh, I have created and downloaded from my GitHub. So I'm going to put it in there. So I'm going to say uh, create new file here and I'm going to name it garbage collection and the extension is going to be YAML. Right. And then here I'm going to paste uh, what we have just created. And I don't like uh, this in the beginning, so I'm going to just cut it and I'm going to put it at the end, really. Now, uh, it's complaining it's missing property blueprint. What is property blueprint? I think it's time to go uh, to a documentation. So I'm going to go into, I'm going to open a new window and I'm going to go for uh, home assistant documentation. There we go. And uh, here I'm going to go to documentation and uh, we're going to go for blueprints. And there, there's a tutorial how to create a blueprint. So let's see. Right. So it's saying to create a blueprint, you first need to have a working automation. Well, didn't we just do that? Next, create the blueprint file and put them in the config blueprints automation folder. We did that as well. So that's cool. Next, add a basic blueprint metadata. We need to add this on the top of the file. Okay, copy and uh, add it on top. Cool. But I don't like those names. This is not motion light, right? So we need to rename it to uh, send notification for garbage collection. And uh, here I can add description that explains what it actually does. So I will say that check uh, the garbage collection schedule every day and send notification if the collection is tomorrow. Right, so we have uh, the header for the blueprint. But it's not a blueprint yet, right? Because we still have those constants. It's the it's my sensor name and it's eight o'clock. So we need to change that. So let's see documentation because I think it's quite useful. So define the configurable parts. Exactly. This is what I was just saying. So we need to have this uh, part called inputs and they need to uh, replace those specific uh, constants by something with exclamation input and the name of the input and the way how it's going to look like is just like that input and then the name so let's do that um, so I'm going to go in here and I'm going to say inputs and I'm going to have uh, four inputs so the first one is going to be notify time and uh, I'm going to just copy this and I'm going to have it here instead of the eight o'clock then I'm going to have another one, which is going to be the garbage collection entity. Again, copy and it's going to be here instead of this one. And we need to put there really the uh, input, right? Almost forgot. There you go. Then next, uh, there's this device, which is this ugly name. So we need to have the notification device, copy input device. And finally, there is this text. So we will say notification text and again, copy input and uh, notification text so that's cool so we have replaced that then uh, it's saying that the uh, property inputs is not allowed now it complains i think it's input not inputs uh, and here it says the uh, it's supposed to be object and uh, we just have incorrect type because it's missing something right let's see what it's missing so uh, we need to add friendly names to the input so it's going to be name and description let's do that so we need to head here notification time so there's going to be name and uh, the name it's going to be something friendly well notification time but without the underscore and then there's going to be the uh, description and here we're going to say send the notification at this time a day before the collection date and we're going to do the same for the other three uh, so i'm going to just pause the video and uh, i'm going to resume 
when I'm done. Right, so we have our uh, inputs defined and it's saved. So uh, we can actually test it. So I can go into a configuration settings. I can uh, reload automations. And then when I go to blueprints, it should show me send notification for garbage collection. I think there's a typo, we can fix that, but send notification for garbage collection. So this is our blueprint. And if I say create automation, uh, it uh, says it's from the blueprint, which is send notification for garbage collection. There's the description and there's the four inputs and it's gonna create automation, which is called the same as the blueprint. That's cool. The only problem with that is uh, the inputs are just a simple text field. So this is not very useful, not very uh, user-friendly. Remember this device number? I would have to type it in here. Th that's kind of um, not very nice. So we need to improve that. Uh, so let's go back uh, to the uh, Visual Studio. Uh, first of all, there is this uh, send notification. There you go. Uh, so how do we improve the blueprints? So let's go back to our documentation. Uh, there you go. Describing the inputs, exactly what we needed. So uh, it says that you can use those selectors and the selectors, they could go some like entity with the domain and click in that. And there's different types of selectors. So time, well, we need time, right? If you say it's selector time, then it's gonna allow me to enter the time just like that. That's cool, let's do it. Uh, so modify time and uh, we will say it's selector and it's gonna be time, cool. Garbage collection entity. So here it's gonna be selector, it's gonna be entity. I think that was entity, wasn't it? So let's see entity. And the entity is going to allow us to have integration, which is going to be our garbage collection. Otherwise, I would see all the entities in Home Assistant, all the lights and all the switches and sensors. I don't want that. So what I'd like to have for the entity is to have integration of garbage collection. Then the device, you want to see the device. So it's going to be selector and the selector is going to be a device and the device is gonna be from integration. In fact, it's a, it's a mobile app because it's gonna be the, my mobile phone where the Home Assistant application is running. So we have that. Let's test this. Configuration, settings, reload, come back, blueprints. Uh, okay, this is fixed. You can create automation and look at that. So send notification for, and let's configure it. It's gonna be bio waste. And uh, then it's gonna be 8 p.m. entity, right. And it's showing me only those garbage collection entities. So we're gonna go for the bio waste device. It should show me only those mobile phones. So Yana, Clara, me. So my mobile phone and a message, it's gonna be the garbage, the bio waste is tomorrow. There we go. And we can save it. And if I save it to create automation and it did because it showed me those controls in here and I can test it, I can run it in here. So it's pretty cool. So I have uh, created this blueprint. So what I can do is I can go to the blueprints and I can create another one for another garbage entity, right? So I could do that. Uh, so it's quite useful. I have it on my home assistant and I can reuse it. And cool thing about that is if I wanted to update the blueprint, I can change that and then reload the automations and it will update all the different automations. So it's pretty cool. But I want to do more than that. What I want to do is I want to share it with the community. So how are we going to do that? So I'm going to select this whole thing and I'm going to uh, copy that to my clipboard. And I can share it in two different uh, ways. Uh, one way is if I go here into the blueprints, there is this discover more blueprints and it's gonna take me uh, to the 
Home Assistant Blueprint Exchange. And I can create a post in here and I log in and uh, there are some rules how to do it and I can share it with the community through this. There is another way to do that because I have uh, my uh, GitHub, so I can go to my GitHub. And in my GitHub, uh, there is something that uh, you can create, which is called GIST, which is, uh, which is like a cloud clipboard, if you will. You will just put a snippet of code, which I will be able to share with the others on the internet. So let me do that. I'm gonna go to the GIST, and from here, I'm going to say plus to create a new GIST. And in here, I'm gonna just uh, paste our file and I'm gonna uh, put a file name there. So it's gonna be garbage notification.yaml. And then I'm going to put there a description. Well, I will say this is a, I will copy, I will copy this uh, name in here, but I will say this is a uh, home assistant blueprint automation blueprint to send, send a notification for a garbage collection. And so this is my GIST. I'm going to create public GIST. So I'm gonna just click on the create and we have our GIST. So what I can do is I can just uh, click on that. And then uh, there is this uh, link which I can copy. So this is the address of my GIST. So if I now want to give this to someone, uh, then he can import it into the Home Assistant. Let me show you. I'm going to delete uh, the um, garbage collection blueprint in here. So I'm going to just delete that. And if I would just give the link to someone, he will say import blueprint. He will paste the URL in here and uh, click on preview blueprint. It will find it. It will say this is the blueprint path where it's going to put it in my Home Assistant and uh, I can see it in here and I can say import blueprint and here it is, it's imported and now I can create the automation just like that. So this is actually a way to share it, but there is a better way, a nicer way to do that because we can create something called batch, which is gonna create a nice picture. Uh, it's, uh, I use that in my GitHub. If you uh, go to my, for example, garbage collection repository, there in the documentation, you see there are those uh, buttons. Those buttons, uh, these are the uh, badges that you could create. And to do it is there is this uh, create link, which is on the MIME Home Assistant IO create link. You can Google for it. Uh, and in here, so I'm gonna create link and I'm gonna like to create link for a uh, blueprint start import. So this is gonna be a link for blueprint start import and I'm gonna paste uh, the link of my blueprint and then it will create this uh, those three things the URL it's gonna create a markdown which is uh, what I used in the uh, markdown documentation in the github or it can create an HTML code that you can put on your website so it's gonna create those buttons and if I click on this button then it's going to open the import dialog uh, directly to my home assistant so in here uh, I can uh, import it now if you go back to the documentation uh, let's see if we have missed something so we created the automation created the file edit the header uh, provided inputs provided the uh, metadata to the inputs the description the selectors uh, we described them and uh, there is an example of the final blueprint, which is very similar to, to ours. And then there is instru instructions how you can uh, use it with the user interface, which we did. And finally, to share love, look at that. So let's share the love. So it says there is uh, two ways to do it. Informal sharing using GIST and uh, share it on the blueprint exchange. Uh, which we have done as well. So I think we covered everything. It actually quite closely followed the documentation, which is quite interesting. So if you want to refer back to it, you don't have to rewatch this whole video. You can just go back to this documentation because it's pretty much documents step-by-step step exactly what we did today. So now you know how, and you can start creating your first blueprints and share it with the others.
So this is the end. Uh, we have uh, finished our five-part series about making automations in Home Assistant. Uh, I was, I, I'm really interested uh, whether you have uh, completed it all the way to the end or whether I've lost it you uh, somewhere in the middle. But I, I guess if you're watching this speech, then uh, you probably keep watching. So it's kind of cool. Congratulations. Uh, sometimes I'm uh, criticized or, or maybe, maybe criticize the wrong word, but sometimes people comment that uh, I'm making it too complicated, that it's too, too complex, that uh, Home Assistant is too complicated. This video, it was, uh, I think, slightly different because I started from very basic, uh, something that I think everyone should be able to do, and I was gradually increasing the complexity all the way to what I would consider advanced level. And uh, I'm hoping that I actually took quite a lot of you uh, with me. And if I did achieve this objective, then uh, please let me know, because I would really uh, like to know if, if you learned something. And uh, if you like the video, you know what to do. Click the like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.